Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's the eighth round uh, here from the GM Round Robin uh, campaign. And uh, my opponent for this round uh, is Nicholas Theodoru. Uh, I played him in Las Vegas just back in, uh, when was that? June? June, yes. And um, he is 2570. He has five points out of seven. And uh, he needs to beat me to clinch an, a, a GM norm. Actually, his third and final GM norm and the title. Uh, why does he need to beat me? Because he will have six points out of eight if he beats me. Uh, and his last round will just be a draw. I mean, in Grandmaster Round Robins, uh, if you've made the draw, I mean, if you've made the, you know, you, you just need a draw in the last round, it's very unlikely someone is going to try to spoil that from you. Um, and so I was prepared uh, for him to play D4, actually, because it's his main opening. Back in Vegas, he did play Knight F3. I was not expecting Knight F3 because I can play a whole lot of stuff. He's been playing D4, and it's funny, he was preparing the Dutch because it's my most it's my most popular thing in the database, and I was preparing to go into his Catalan, so Knight F3, uh, D5, G3. I was expecting him to play the Catalan, although he, he actually likes to employ this move order, G3, which avoids going into the Queen's Indian defense. It puts the bishop on the diagonal first. And when he played this on the second move, I was like, what is he doing? Um, th this cuts back his repertoire a little bit because he normally doesn't play into the Queen's Indian. I'm not saying he doesn't know how to play the Queen's Indian. I'm just saying normally he doesn't do it. So I played e6 and then b6. And the reason I was confident going into the Queen's Indian defense was because when I was preparing for Justin Wang, uh, I thought we might have a Queen's Indian. I thought one of the lines that I would be playing against Justin would be the QID. And he goes g3, now black has bishop a6 or bishop b7, but I'm just employing a very solid and stable setup. And my logic was going to be this. I'm going to play this game solidly. I know enough about the opening that I'll just keep the position balanced. And he needs to beat me, so he will probably overpress at some point. Um, or, you know, he's just going to press, 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 and I'll have to defend, and let's go. And the other thing is, in the game in Vegas, I got into a deep time trouble, and I spent way too much time. So I was going to try to hit those two markers. So here we go. He plays knight to c3. Uh, the other main line is, um, uh, instead of knight c3, there is rook to e1, where I have some stuff, and there is, uh, there is d5, which is just neutralized. This is a pawn sacrifice line, but nobody's really doing this nowadays. Um, so knight e4, that's the whole point, and... Queen c2 here is the main move to pressure the knight, and so is bishop d2. And I actually thought he was going to do this because I'm pretty sure he is staying in the same hotel room as Jemil, who's uh, playing in the other section, he's a grandmaster, and Jemil played this against my friend uh, in their section. And I was like, what if they go for this? And my friend played f5, one of the two main moves, and I was like, I'm gonna go bishop f6. I decided all this at the board because I wasn't even expecting a Queen's Indian, but I know enough about it that it, you know, it's not the most complex opening to play. I play d6, and you know, maybe I'll try to play for c5. Here he shocked me. Um, I am for I'm completely certain here, and the database confirmed it. He played a move that just isn't played in this position, knight to e1, and he, this move forces trades. It forces exchanges. So first I take his knight, I attack his queen, so he has to take back. Then I trade the bishops, which is normally a victory for black. Uh, and now I play c5. I don't have to play c5, but I just kind of didn't want to allow him to take the full center. So I was like, all right, I'll play c5. Now, of course, he should not take because there are some positions that are simply unwinnable, and this is one of them. It's completely symmetrical structure. We've traded simply too many pieces. Um, so he goes d5, and I was debating here between taking the bishop and then playing e5 or just playing e5. Now, just playing e5 straight up looks kind of idiotic because all my pawns are in dark squares. So this just doesn't make any sense. Um, so I traded and played e5. And this is exactly what I meant in terms of my strategy. Like, I'm not trying to play this game for a draw. I'm trying to play solid. In fact, he's the one who initiated the trades. If he doesn't play 91, we're going to have some tension in the center. I'm going to play c5. But he chose to trade off three sets of minor pieces. So I'm like, all right, all right, if you're going to beat me in this position... You're either going to checkmate me because you have more space over here, or you're going to win in the long run because you have some activity on my pawn. So here we go. He plays e4. I've got a couple of plans here. First of all, one of my plans is a6, b5. Like, just very quickly creating counterplay. But I didn't fully believe in this because I thought he could just play a4. And the second that I move this pawn, my b6 pawn is weak. Now I could sacrifice. I could just go take, 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 boom. But I was like, what am I doing? Like, why am why? Why am I doing this? Because he's just gonna he's just gonna attack me over here or just defend this and like why am I losing a pawn? So I was like, okay, I thought for a while and I and I thought I played a move that 
that was like giga brain. I was like, I'm going to play queen e8. The idea of queen e8 is that the, if the knight comes in, it doesn't hit me on e7. Um, I'm going to wait for him to make a move. And also this covers this diagonal. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have played this because I'm going to play this anyway. Queen e8 kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but it, 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 the point is it doesn't matter. And the other idea is it stops at four. So in a perfect world, he might get a position that looks like this and then goes like rook g3, doubles up on the g file, not by eating his own king, but by sliding it over and like mates me. But if he if he's forced to take on f4, oh, he played g4 in the game. But if he's forced to take on f4 with like the knight, like, or let's just say the rook to guard this, this is really bad because this pawn is now just the backwards pawn. It has no neighbors that are behind it or next to it. And I'll play knight d7. I control the square in front of it. And I'll plant my knight there. Beautiful square. And we're, we're, we're vibing. I was like, all right, queen eight's a, a really nice move. He plays g4. And I'm like, wait a minute. What is he doing? Because now f4 is completely off the table because he can't actually take back with the pawn. I mean, he couldn't do it anyway. But if he defended the e pawn, I'm like, what is g4? Is he trying to play rook h3 and mate me? Or is he trying to play h4 and take some space? I was like, I don't know. Now I'm going to go queen e7. So I was like, okay, I thought this was pretty pr pretty clever because now I can fight for the dark squares because he's basically given up the dark squares by playing g4. So then he played h4. I was like, okay, knight d7, he goes queen d2. It's funny because I think the point of this move is to throw this rook over here, play h5, bring the knight maybe to f5. Of course, if he plays knight e3 to try to play knight f5, I'm going to go g6 and then he'll be able to slide in. Um, then I was like, yo, I got g6 anyway. Look how smart I am. I'm going to start my own attack. I was actually thinking that. Like, no joke. Like, rook h3, I was half considering playing f5. And I was like, yo, who is attacking who in this position? Like, he thought he was attacking me. Black is better here if, we, if, if all this gets traded. Because I just played king h8. What the hell is this? You play this move. I'm putting my rook right here. That knight is not going anywhere. Black is much better. So I was getting excited. I was like, he's not going to play rook h3 because I'm threatening to go f5 and he can't go here because of course I take the pawn. So actually I was I was very happy with the way I was playing this game and I was managing my clock well. We were even on the clock. He played queen h6, which I saw, but I, I didn't... There was food on my lip this entire time from lunch. Well, hopefully you all didn't see that. I think this camera is not as high resolution as the one I have at home, so... I saw queen h6, but I, I don't know. I just... I didn't... I wasn't thinking that it was super scary... Because now I can fork the pawns with this move knight f6, and he actually has to play f3 here. He has to play this. And f3 means that he cannot move the rook there, so the attack is gone. Which I thought was a, was a moral victory. Um, you know, if he, if he pins me like this, this is another option, but uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. He chose not to do it. He played f3. Uh, which I which I actually thought was the correct move, and then the engine agrees. And basically, White's like, all right, I can't mate you, but I'm going to beat you with this strategy number two in the endgame. Here, I thought I played a move which was very clever, King h8. King h8 is actually th threatening to pose some very big problems, because, for example, I'm just going to kick his queen out, and if he just voluntarily goes away, I'm going to freeze the knight by playing knight d7, and then I'm going to play f5. So, if, like, just a random move, I'm going to go here, and I, th I think black is better. Um, I think black is better because, you know, again, the whole point is that he wants to stop me from playing f5, but he would be abandoning this. So again, I, I was very confident at this point. I was like, then he played this move. I was like, all right, that's pretty smart. So now, now I can't really go to d7 because I want my knight here. If we trade queens, I want my knight on d7. So there's no f4 and my knight can always jump to that, right? I'm trying to follow the strategy here, but he goes here. And now I have no way to get my knight to d7. Um, I mean, I guess I can play queen d8, knight d7, but that, that looks borderline just completely idiotic. So I played this, and I was expecting him to immediately go after my a pawn, which he did. So I went like this and traded. And I, again, to this point, I feel like I'm playing, the, I'm playing logically. Like, I, I'm, I felt like I was playing a, a, quite a decent game. Um, and then he plays knight e3, and, you know, I'm like, alright, he, at some point I'm gonna have to figure out what to do over here. I play kind of an ugly move, uh, not this one, but, you know, I see that he's coming. He, he wants rook a6, he wants knight b5, and if he gets knight, rook, and then a second rook on the a file, I'm screwed. I don't have enough space to defend myself. So, I play this move after some thought. It's about 18 minutes to 28 here, like pretty close, maybe 10 minute gap. Would like it to be closer, but last time we played he had 30 and I had 1, um, and, uh... I was like, I'm, I'm, everything is going well. I have a slightly worse position, but we're holding. We're going to see what happens. He plays knight c3. I thought about this move um, just so, you know, little spikes. And then the idea would be like, if he goes rook b1 to try to play b4, 
that um, I'm ready. Like my rooks are right there, and and I'm up, I'm just defending my weaknesses. But this looked so ridiculous. I mean, it just looked so passive. The engine is not afraid. The engine's like, there's nothing to fear here. You just go here, and you're fine. And I was like, oh wait, no. Apparently now there's knight b5. Did I mess something up? Oh yeah, you just don't play knight. You just go like here or something. And I mean, again, it, it looks ridiculous to play like this. Ah, the second he attacks me, I play knight d7. But this just looked like like what am I doing? I mean, this is so passive. Ah, yeah, but like I said, engine's not afraid. The engine doesn't understand things like, oh my god, that's so passive, and I have no moves. The engine's like, yes, it's passive, and what is, what is the problem? I don't, I don't. Okay, so you have very passive position. I don't know why the engine's like Soviet, but yeah. So that's the difference. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do this. I'm going to do a uh, h5 first, like h5, because I know that he has to lock the position. He can't, he can't let my knight get in. That, that, that he doesn't want that. So I was like, all right, we locked that side. Now we play 98. Now we're going to turn our focus this way because um, he's going to try to play rook b1, which is exactly what he did. And I played a5. And, you know, I consciously weakened my structure. b6 is weak, but he doesn't have a way to get to it. Like if he plays rook b3, great. That's exactly what he did. If he plays rook b5 with the intention of playing knight to a4 and then bringing the second rook, I kick him out. I just kick him out. And then, like, for example, if he plays a4 and shuts me down, now his knight can't go to a4. So he's frozen. And maybe I can even bring my knight to b4. So he has to be very careful with his pawn moves. And then here, finally, my strategy paid off. I was waiting for this moment, like the entire game, for him to do something drastic, which made the position imbalanced, like, like to overextend a little bit. And his next move completely shocked me. He played f4. Um... And the point is that, well, I have to take. If I don't take, then he plays f5. And I, I can't just let him get free space on me because I will be suffocated to death. So I go here. And he rotates the rook. He's like, I'm not going to make progress here, so I'm going to go win back my pawn. Now, I have two choices here. It's time to now react to him complicating matters. It's maybe 10 minutes for me, maybe 14, 15 for him. I got three options. I'm like, oh, I think he slightly over, like underestimated the fact that I have a4 here. I got really excited to play a4 um, because now he has to like deflect off center and I'm, I'm going to win this pawn. Um, apparently, I also have this pawn break, which I did see during the game, but I was so excited by a4 that I, I didn't even like compare the two. Apparently, I can just go f6, which I just didn't think made a whole lot of sense after takes takes rook f4. But again, the engine's like, yeah, you're fine. You can't really move anything, but you're fine. Um, cause he can't really move a whole lot. And yeah, I mean, F6 is mildly frustrating not, not to just play. Um, I don't even exactly know what he would do here. If he takes on F4, like if he does it this way, uh, then I just win this pawn. So, I mean, F6 was right there, you know, uh, th this kind of pawn break, but I decided to go for A4 and what I had calculated was, um, if, well, he played knight A4, but if rook A3... I thought that I was going to play uh, b5. And if knight b5, I take the center pawn. If cb5, knight c7, I thought this, 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 this. And what I had failed to realize during the game is that I'm down a pawn here. That's the problem with calculating, like, variations that are five, six moves long when you have 10 minutes on the clock and then you have to go in multiple directions. I straight up miscounted. Like, I, like when, I, when I played A4, because he, he was starting to play faster as well. When I played A4, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to go knight c7, b5. We're just going to explode the position. Like this, and I'll, I'll play b5. That's what we're going to do. Um, but, it, but it turns out, like, I calculated this, 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 and here it's 5-5, five, five, but he, he can go here. And uh, I'm going to be a pawn down. Now, I do have some activity. You know, I can play king g7. Um, but he has activity also, so he's probably just winning here. Uh, I don't know what I would have played if he played rook a3, to be honest. I mean, the engine is trying to tell me f6 anyway. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's trying to say that going into that line is probably best. Um, so I played, uh, yeah, b5 was my idea, but he took, with the, he took with this. And then I took, and then he, he did this. Now here we should not trade. Um, I thought we shouldn't trade because I was like, why am I trading? He's just going to promote. The engine's not afraid. Um... Oh, now it's getting afraid. But in general, if you're trying to draw, gotta activate the rook. And he told me here that he actually missed that after b3, 
I can activate this rook with rook a7, rook e7. I was actually getting very excited here. I'm like, all right, like, we're going to win this. Like, you know, we're not going to lose this game. Like, we're playing this for a win. The rook is coming. Maybe f3, maybe rook h4, maybe rook g4. Like, knight g7, knight f5. Like, I'm going to get all my pieces to this king. It is wide open. His only game plan is to push the a pawn. And the time is, like, equaling out. I mean, he's got, like, 12. I got, like, maybe, like, 10, 8 or something. Um, it, it, it was, like maybe 11 8 11 7 something like, something along these lines he plays rook b8 which i did which is not something i did not expect um and i and i rotated my rook uh and then he played this move uh no i'm sorry he played uh, he played rook d8 which pressures my knight and my pawn and at this point i realized his game plan is to go knight b6 and knight c8 or knight b6 and um well yeah like 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 here to threaten to threaten this stuff I have three candidate moves, okay? King g7, king h7, and f3. f3 is the most forcing, because after something like this, for example, um, I can, like, take on h4. And I, I didn't know how to evaluate this at all. I was like, am, am I dumb for activating his rook? Am I smart for activating my rook? I don't know. The engine also cannot fully figure it out. It thinks that f3 is a good way to go, though. Um... And then the idea of king g7 is that if the f file ever opens, this is all defended. And then my knight can go somewhere else, or I can play f6, and then takes takes. And um, if, uh, if, if I play king h7, I was like, well, I can play knight g7, knight f5, and then knight h4, which was kind of something that I, I, there was no other way I could activate my knight. So, so I decided to play king h7, and he played this. And in my mind, I was like, okay, this doesn't work because knight c8 comes in and I'm screwed. Like, I can't do anything. And if I trade rooks, he just plays a4. So he's just winning here easily. So I was like, okay, he's going to go knight b6. And what I'm going to do, like, this is what I looked at all the way back here. I was like, here, I'm going to go king h7, knight b6. Um, knight g7 is impossible because knight g8. So king h7, knight b6, I'm going to go attack his pawn. He's going to have to play rook f2 to defend it, and then I'm going to start bringing my knight. I'm going to sacrifice the pawn. I'm going to play knight f5, because when my knight moves, the pawn's gone. Knight f5, and then we're going to go for his position. He can't play a4, because now the knight is on the same line as the b pawn, so I'm going to slide over. And, like, you know, I got, like, five, six minutes. I'm like, all right, quick calculation, boom. Then he plays this. Uh, and I realized I screwed up. Um, because... He can play that. I completely hallucinated the fact that he can't play this move. Because after rook b7, there's just a5. So I just bounced my rook around, moved it off the center line, and, uh, and let his pawn go super far. So now it's just straight up threatening to push all the way. Uh, and I, I, yeah, that was very frustrating. Um, because now I'm just losing. After a4, it's just losing. And uh, I went for knight g7, and I blundered the follow-up. It's not the first mistake that kills you, although it's very damn close. It's uh, it's the fact that the threat is not even to take the pawn. Uh, the threat is to go here. Which, I had spent so much time looking at knight c8 that... Because this is not a threat when my rook is, like, back here. Um, that this was the idea. Like, knight f6 is mate, or a bunch of forks, and if I go here, he just takes... And knight f6, and he picks up my rook, and I resigned. Uh, and with that, he actually clinched uh, the GM norm and the title. So, big win for him, and I congratulated him. We talked a little bit after the game. What's most frustrating to me about this game uh, is, uh, is the fact that it was even for so long, and I just, I just hallucinated something at the end. It's, like, funny because... Definitely, there's a part of me playing this game that's that's thinking, don't lose when I'm defending, rather than at this point, although, like I said, I was thinking maybe we'll play this for a win, but then I immediately looked, I found the wrong plan. I just miscalculated, you know, t time is low on both sides. He played more perfectly throughout the game than me. This game is like the best example of just, I'm not at that level yet. Um... Because these guys will find the best plans. Like, even moments in the game, for example, when he played f4, which was inaccurate, like, I knew it was inaccurate, and then I just did not respond the right way. So I think, um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of, uh, of consistency. These guys will find the right plans, the most critical plans, the most, 
you know, accurate plans more often than they won't. And even when they make inaccuracies, the game goes back to being equal rather than just outright losing. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not like super, super frustrated because I did everything I wanted to this game. Everything. The whole game plan was good. And I got all the way down there and, uh, and I screwed it up. And that's why the video is called Oops. Uh, lots to learn. Lots to learn. I, I'm, I'm actually not as frustrated uh, with this game uh, maybe as one should be when they lose this, but um, yeah, congratulations to, to Nicholas, and uh, we have one more round to go. I gotta play uh, Tianqi in round number nine. I will see you then.